I'm going to start off with saying settings is one of the most important things in this game. If you have the wrong settings, you can be one of the best players, but your skill is going to be dropped very quickly. Yes, I was a pro player, and yes, I'm top 250 in the world. So let me give you guys the sauce and all the things you need to know. I'm going to go through some of the settings quickly that aren't as important, and obviously the stuff that I feel like are important, I'm going to break them down a little bit more. So display mode, full screen exclusive, display monitor, obviously my monitor, display adapter, obviously my graphics card. Make sure your refresh rate is on the right setting. This thing resets sometimes, so that's something you have to uh, take a look at. Mine is 240 hertz, so I have a 239, 9.70. I got my display resolution at 1440p, which is the monitor I have. Aspect ratio automatic. This is a good to restart your shaders if you need to. Display, leave it like that. I like having my brightness a little bit higher in this game because I don't know what it is. It just feels like the game is dark. So I usually put it like 53, 54, 55. Right now I have it on 54. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on boost, but you can have this on on. Just make sure it's on one of these to help your frames and help your performance. Echo mode, make sure it's on efficiency. You want to have the best performance. Don't put anything else. VSIG gameplay, make sure this is off. This will hurt your frames and you do not want that. VSIG menu is at 100%. Custom frame rate. People like to mess with this. I usually just have it on unlimited nowadays, but if you wanted to customize it, this is a good customization right here that you can put. I have my menu render resolution to optimal. This is kind of basic default stuff. 90, uh, make sure your HDR is off. And then let's go to quality. So I have this on custom. I have this at 100%. Again, you want to double check. It's your monitor. So I got a 1440p. It's a 1440p. Dynamic resolution off. Fidelity cast. This is going to improve your quality a lot. It's going to make your game look a lot clearer, sharper, which I really like because I can see stuff easier. And I have my fidelity cast strength at 95. I usually recommend like 90 to 95. Uh, obviously, if you put it at 100, it's not bad. It just looks very, very sharp. Uh, this does hurt your frames a little bit, but I feel like it's worth it. It just makes your game look so much clearer. I have this off. These uh, RAM skill target on 75. Some people have this like 80, 85, but I would say that's a good range. Uh, I have this on on, off. Texture resolution low, low, off, high, high, off, off, low, off, low. Now you got to make sure and understand that a lot of these settings that have them on low and off is because I want better performance. I want more frames. And then some of them that are high is because it doesn't affect your, your FPS that much. And sometimes it's even better to have it high for more FPS. So that's why I have some of these settings like that. I have this all low, shadow quality low, screen off, ambient off, off, low. If you do these, you're saving yourself like 20 frames right there. So make sure you drop all these off, off tessellation, low, off, 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 and off. Now let's go to the view. FOV, I am on 110. Now, this is a little bit crazy. Uh, I really don't recommend this. If I want to give you guys an honest opinion, I would say play somewhere between like 100 and 107. I think for multiplayer, that is the sweet spot. A lot of pro players play on 100, uh, 103, or 105. Some even play at 107, but that's kind of a good range. Why? Because usually under 107, um, FOV usually get more aim assist. So... That's a really good recommendation. I've been playing on 110 just for fun, honestly, uh, but I did like playing on 107. ADS field of view affected. This is going to help you have less visual recoil. Now, this is when you aim in, it aims in zoomed out. Like it goes more with your FOV versus independent. It definitely feels better. It definitely feels better when you're on a higher FOV. So I really recommend affected. Weapon field of view wide. I just like how the gun looks smaller on my screen. Uh, this is on 80. This is on default. That doesn't really matter. If you want to have less stuff on the screen and like better visual and less more, you know, less visual recoil, make sure you have world motion blur off, weapon motion blur off, film grain, put this all the way to zero. I don't know why this, this is on default. It's like on 50. Put this all the way to zero. It's going to make your game look clear. And then obviously it's very important. First person camera movement. Make sure to put this at 50%. This for some reason is at 100% default. It's your screen shakes. Like I don't like realism. Like I don't get it. I don't want it. You know, you want to play, you want the, the least shaking possible on your screen when you're playing from, you know, explosions, grenades, when you're getting shot at, whatever it is, it's going to make the game feel a lot smoother. Now let's go to the big important thing, controller. So really quickly, if you want to use a specific button layout, obviously edit and button layout, I play on tactical flipped is the one I've been playing on for years. And you can even edit your actual buttons to other buttons, which is pretty cool. It's something new. Uh, bumper ping, I have this on. I play on flipped, so I shoot with my bumpers instead of my triggers. Stick layout, default, controller, vibration off. There's no reason for you to have vibration. It's honestly a disadvantage to some degree. So I just recommend to have this off. Now, dead zone input, something a lot of people talk about. And it's really cool because I have a new setting in this game. But there's a lot to talk about. Right? So you can test your dead zone. If you you know click test stick dead zone, you can see your stick move around. You can see if it's going to move by itself a little bit. And if you have stick drift, 
Uh, but you know, a lot of people have these questions always ask me what my dead zone is. So left stick minimum, I had this on one. This basically means like it's very responsive. As soon as I move my stick, like it's go, right? The more you put the, the dead zone up, the, the, the more it takes, the longer it takes. So you can see basically right off the rip, I would have to move at a certain range. If I, if I would have to move out of that red range for me to start moving, you see this? So the more stick, the more dead zone you have on minimum, the, the longer it takes for it to react essentially. So you want to drop this all the way down to low, especially on your left stick, your left sticks to move. You want it, you want better movement. You want it, your, your movement to be more like quicker. Uh, just put this on one, one or two, three max, but you can have this on low. It doesn't really matter. Now, left stick max, I have this on 85. This is honestly another good thing. So basically to reach like max, you know, sprint speed and max movement speed, you know, your stick essentially has to go all the way right to the end. So another example here, I'm going to put this, uh, test this desert zone so you can see. So this red bar, you can see this whole red bar around it. I basically would have to hit the red bar and I'm, I'm already at max. So I don't have to move my stick all the way towards the end, but, you know, almost to the end for me to reach that maximum. So this is something you can test around. You can see the lower, the more I lower it, the less like I have to reach. So once I hit this, which is a lot quicker, it's already maximum. But here's the thing. The lower you go, the weird your movement is going to get. And it's going to, your stick's going to, uh, you know, act weird. So the lowest I usually recommend lowest is like 70, 70, 75. Uh, I put it mine on higher because my stick was acting a little weird. So I put it a little bit higher, but you're going to notice it's going to help your movement and it's going to make it, you know, your movement overall quicker. Right stick minimum. I have it on three. I like having more control of my stick and in my aim. Again, this is going to give you a little bit of stick drift, so you got to be careful. Like usually, defaults like five. If you have anything over in five, then you are cooked. It's going to affect your aim in a negative way, and I'm not kidding when I say this. If you have a stick drift on like your right stick mi uh, minimum on 10, 15, you're not able to use your full stick like the full potential because you can't use the initial part of it. So like, I just it just feels weird. It feels like almost you have a slight input delay uh, in some way. So I have my right stick on three, three, four, five is a good spot. If you can put a lower, you can try it. If not, I'll max five and right stick max 99. Don't mess with this at all. You don't want to mess with this. It's going to affect your, your, your aim in a negative way. Left trigger zero, right trigger zero. Now let's go to the aiming. Now we talk about sensitivity. We talk about pro players, the sensitivities they use. A lot of pros use six, six, one. Now I know some of you guys want to be cracked out. A lot of you guys want those fast sensitivities, but there's just no reason to be that cracked. Now, would I recommend the highest? Probably eight. I wouldn't go higher than eight. I feel like eight is probably the fastest you should go, especially if you're like learning to get better, especially if you're trying to improve your aim. For the people that play on like 10, 10, 11, 11, 13, like those are just too high, man. I think you're just overdoing it. In multiplayer, your sense doesn't need to be that high. It's quick cuts. It's little angles. It's, you know, three lanes. Like you're not, you're not in war zone spinning in circles looking for people. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. So 661 is really what I could recommend. This is like what 80 90 percent of pro players play on it's like almost the perfect sense if you want to play a little crazy you can go seven 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 eight eight point seven five for like six ads you can mess around like that but six six one is what i really recommend aim response curve type i have it on dynamic this is a new setting that was introduced in mw 2019 i'll never forget and dynamic is incredible this is like a, a setting uh the aim, aim response curve type whatever that allows you to basically snap on people and hit those insane shots. Now, this is like what every majority again pro player uses and have been using for years. Uh, you know, very few use standard, majority, majority, majority. I'm talking about 90, 95, 97% use dynamic. It's just so good. And if you're not using it, you're most likely at a disadvantage. So I really recommend dynamic. I have this on one. I don't think this really matters. Aim response curve slope type. This is something you can also mess with nowadays. You can go to dynamic, you push show more, it's a new setting. I just leave mine on one. Some people like to mess around with it, but I think it's just perfect the way it is. Uh, custom sensitivity per zoom. This is good for like war zone. Doesn't really matter for multiplayer. Uh, obviously, aim assist type. This is another big setting. I have mine on default. Now, some people have used Black Ops. Black Ops just feels nerfed in this game. And it got nerfed, I think, last year. And ever since it got nerfed, it just doesn't feel as good. Like, yeah, you get a little bit more aim assist sometimes. But I feel like there's just random gunfights where it slows down for me. And like... It just slows down so hard i can't like track him by the guy like really good and i just die because i lose the gunfight because he hits like a slight cancel on me and i can't track him so i really recommend default if you if you feel like you need more aim assist you feel like you're struggling with your aim you can use black ops for a little bit but i recommend to eventually switch back to default and get used to it because i think that's really the wave now gameplay there's a lot of settings here that we want to talk about very quickly so first of all i do play on auto tactical sprint i know it's like g8 in the pro league 
I'm no longer a pro player, so I use it. It makes your movement better. If you feel like you struggle with movement, this is going to make your movement better. I really recommend this. There's another setting we could talk about afterwards that also can improve your movement. Slide maintain sprint. I have this on on. Uh, tactical sprint behavior. This is the other sprint setting. So if you don't want to run auto attack sprint because you feel like you can't bot walk and you caught off sprinting too much, you can turn this on. This setting on single tap. Uh, is it single tap sprint or uh, or run? So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think it's single tap run. And this is just basically like automatic tactical sprint, but you can still walk around. And then once you actually want to sprint and tactical sprint, you just have to click your button once. So that's another cool setting you can use. Grounded mantle off so you don't auto mantle everything. Automatic airborne mantle partial. So again, you're not mantling every single thing. Automatic ground mantle hang off. Slide dive behavior slide only. Now in this game, because of diving and sliding being a thing and slide canceling being back, Slide only is the best way to get those fast, quick slide cancels that you can't with any other setting. Unfortunately, that's how they made it. So I really, really recommend slide only for the best slide cancels possible. Plunging underwater free, even though this doesn't really matter because there's no really water other than sub base, but I think that's not a map at the moment. Spring door bash, obviously have this on. Parachute automatic behavior, war zone off, but that doesn't really matter. I like my ledge climb behavior on movement base, so I don't have to mantle. As soon as I press forward, it automatically mantles for me. So we go to combat behavior. So we're going to scroll down to equipment behavior, have it on hold. A lot of these are pretty much default. Tap to reload is pretty much default. Obviously for Warzone, you would use interact, but tap to reload is perfect. Uh, a lot of these settings here is default for multiplayer. You don't have to really worry about a lot of these things. Yeah, and then that's pretty much it. And now we're going to go to the audio settings. Audio mix, I use home theater. Now I do have a specific uh, uh, sound EQ settings on my PC to help me hear a little bit more. But I feel like with home theater, it just sounds really good. If you want a little bit louder audio, uh, you could use headphones bass boost. Um, this one is really good. And then obviously I have my master game volume, which a lot of people wonder. I have it on 90 for my gameplay music volume. I have this on zero because music volume has no effect in your gameplay. So no longer. So you shouldn't really care for it. Dialogue volume at 60 affects volume all the way to 100, which is footsteps, gunshots, all that stuff, which you really want. Dialogue volume is basically your 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 character calling out, you know, random stuff that could be important, like kill streak inbound, you know, predator missile coming on you, you know, stuff like that. So you got to be careful. Uh, cinematic music volume on zero again. Music volume doesn't matter. I have war tracks volume on 100, but that doesn't really matter for multiplayer. And then voice chat if you want to hear your enemies. And these are kind of the other settings I have here if you want to take a quick, quick look in it, but it doesn't really matter too much on these things. Next. Something that we really want to talk about is the interface. Now, there's a few settings in here that are, are actually pretty important and you should definitely note down. So first of all, for color customization, a lot of people ask me, how do I get my game looking so vibrant, looks good, you know, the colors look nice. First of all, you can change a lot of these customizations for colors. I don't know if you know, you can change the, the color you are, the, the, the color your enemy are, etc. But other than that, there's a color filter settings in the actual game. So this is pretty cool. So for color filter, I have it on color filter too. And you, for a color filter target, you want to put both. And then you want to put this all the way to 100 and all the way to 100. This is going to make your game more vibrant, look better, you know, not as dull. Next thing, HUD bounds. This is pretty important because I'm going to say it straight up. Your mini map is one of the most important things in the game. Your mini map gives you so much information that a lot of people don't truly understand. Again, it tells you where your teammates spawn. It tells you where the enemies are. Based off your teammate spawns, you can predict where the enemies are. You know, there's there's just so much that is going on the map that your mini map gives you so much information. So usually you want to put, you know, I could put this even closer, but you want to put your HUDs, your HUD like very close into the center of your screen instead of having super out. You see, you want to put your HUDs in. That way, your mini map gets closer, which is one of the most important things. Obviously, you can see your ammo over your gun and all that stuff, which is it's nice too. But the mo the re the main thing is your mini map. Then you want to have your mini map on square. This is going to make your mini map a little bit bigger so you can see more things on the mini map instead of the circle. Mini map rotation, obviously on crosshairs. I have mine on static over. I have static just feels the best. I'm going to be honest. I've used the, I've used both of them. Static just feels the best when you're here firing and shooting. Uh, it just stays and it, it feels nice. Center dot. I do have this on. This basically puts a dot in the center of your screen, which I think is helpful. Helps to like centering when you're moving around the map and you can kind of have your, you know, your, your dot on the target ready. Um, I, the thing is there's different sizes, right? So there's default larger and largest. I would not recommend largest. That thing looks like a big blob on your screen. Uh, but default, you know, if it's fine for me, larger, if you feel like you want it a little bit bigger, uh, I'd recommend one of those two. Next, we're going to be talking about the telemetry. And this is a setting that allows you to put like your FPS counter up top, your certain latency, pack of loss, all that stuff. You know, you see the top left of my screen. 
I had tells you my FPS, the pack of loss, my GPU temperature. So this is where you find it in your interface and you go to here and then you just can put whatever or setting you want on. Some people have them all, but realistically, you don't need all these things on. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to drop a like if this video helped you, and I'm sure it will. Also, I'm live on twitch.tv slash apathy pretty much every day. Come drop a follow. Come vibe with me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.